Hi and welcome to this video where we will be discussing how to invoice customers on NetSuite. First of all, we'll start by looking at the elements used on an invoice. For example, we'll look at the customer record, the item record, the VAT, and then we'll move on to finding out how to set up the transaction form so that your invoices are printed correctly or maybe even sent by email in the right HTML template. Finally, we will be running two processes for the invoicing, a manual one and an automatic one based on existing sales orders and bidding schedules. Now, when you invoice a customer, you have to ensure that it's done at the right time, with the right quantities of the right products at the agreed price, with the right currency, with the right credit terms, and you have to also ensure that the customer doesn't have open cases and issues with you and that the person doesn't have a credit limit that's been reached. So taking care of all this information can be quite stressful because if you get any of these wrong, then you could run into serious business where you might never be paid or maybe the customer is going to lose faith in your ability to invoice them correctly and I'm just going to move on to a competitor. So let's see how invoicing on NetSuite is done the correct way. So let's begin with the actual dashboard. You know, you're going to have your dashboard set to make you save a lot of time in running your operations. We are using reminders so that we don't have to go through the whole ERP to find out what it is we need to do. Uh, NetSuite is telling us here very easily that there are 20 items to order if we want to be able to meet our stock levels that are preferred or maybe to be able to uh, deliver in time uh, so that the customers get their orders when they were supposed to. I see that there are products to complete, missing timesheets, that there are some time records to approve, expense reports to approve, customers to bill, and sales orders to invoice. So from just watching my dashboard, I know exactly what's going on on my business. Of course, I've got my KPI scorecards, and I've, I can basically add whatever I want on that dashboard. But if you are not seeing what I'm seeing, and if you feel that what I'm showing to you here is interesting, then just get in touch with us and we can help you get the right dashboards for you and for your team. Now, let's have a look at what we can use to build a sales invoice. So to use a sales invoice, we need to have customer, at least one customer. We need to have items. We potentially need uh, bidding schedules and a tax code. So let's go through each of these. So if you don't have this dashboard, I'm going to use the NetSuite's classic interface and show you that by going to uh, lists, for example, relationships and customers, I can access my list of customers and pick one of them from there. Alternatively, if I know the name of the customer, I can just type it in on the top search menu and click on it to bring the record up in front of me. Now, the record will hold the customer's name, uh, also the sales team that is assigned to it, if any, the partner that brought it in, if that's uh, something that you, you work with. Uh, it's going to categorize your, your customer. You can ca categorize the customers by types. You're going to have a main email address. This is really useful when you want to mass send emails uh, that include invoices. So if you want to batch process invoices and send them automatically to your customers, this is the email that's going to be used. So you have to make sure that you've got the right email there. Even though you have the possibility to have uh, multiple uh, contacts at the bottom, so you could have uh, many people working in this office, but this email here is the email that's going to be receiving the uh, the actual automatic sending of the invoices. You can add your address or multiple addresses at the bottom here. Uh, this is the address subtab, and this is where you're going to put all the billing and shipping addresses. The financial subtab will allow you to set price levels on NetSuite. 
uh, billing terms for credit, uh, the credit limit itself, the value of the credit limit. So um, if you want NetSuite to block your sales team in case your customer is not paying you and you want to prevent them from taking more orders, then you should use credit limits. The customer's currency is there also, so you won't ever have to worry about your sales team putting the wrong currency in. It's always going to be correct. Your accounting team will already have uh, taken care of setting the right accounts receivable on your customer. So that's one weight off your shoulder too. All sales invoices will be affecting the right receivables and the right sales uh, ac accounts. But the sales accounts are set up on the items, not on the customers. There's also a VAT uh, tax code that can be set as default on the customer. If you leave it blank, then NetSuite will look at the customer's country to decide which VAT code and rate to set. Now, there is another element that's quite interesting here at the bottom of the um, financial subtab. It's the ability to set very specific prices for specific items to this customer. You know, maybe it's a very special customer you have a long-term relationship with and you don't want just to set a, a price level against him. You want to have a very specific price that's been agreed on specific items. And this is where you're going to come and, and set those items and prices accordingly when you are on edit mode or creation mode. There's also a preference, which is quite interesting here. You could decide that, uh, you know, maybe if your customer is requesting that you send them uh, your invoices in their own language, then you can set the language and you can, uh, you can then later print the invoice in the language of the customer instead of your own. You can set their preferred shipping carriers. And very importantly, uh, you can also give access to your customers uh, through the NetSuite customer portal for them to be able to take orders, uh, well, to place orders rather, and see uh, maybe all the cases they had with you and uh, the status of your invoicing and uh, also their payments and their balances, but also the status of your, the orders that they place with you. Now, an important thing too on the customer record is the marketing uh, subtab. If you leave the subscriptions at the bottom to soft opt out, you won't be able to send billing communication to your customers. So whenever you have customers you want to send emails to, just make sure that this is done to soft opt in. Right, with that in mind, we covered everything we needed to know about the customer. Uh, let's move on to the item. So to create an item and to look at the list of available items, you need to go to list accounting items. So either click on items to see your list of items or click on new to create a new one if you have the permission to do it. Right, so here we're looking at a ZenBook 3 Deluxe uh, laptop. So we've got a name for that item. We've got a sales description. Uh, at the bottom, we have some information about the purchasing, so how much it costs. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of that, but it's quite interesting to calculate your margins on your sales uh, transactions, like estimate orders and invoices. Uh, that way you can prevent uh, salespeople to eagerly take, uh, well, give to too big a discount to your customer. Then we've got uh, sales pricing. This is where the bidding schedule can be uh, attached to the item. So, for example, if your item is insurance 12 months, uh, then, of course, you can uh, set a specific billing schedule for any orders that are placed for insurance 12 months to be invoiced uh, a 12th of the amount every month. And this would be done automatically by NetSuite and calculated much faster than if you had to go to every sales order and every customer. Uh, you have the possibility to set the item weight that would calculate your shipping costs. You can also go down here and put specific item prices by price levels. The standard price is the one that's uh, basically uh, whenever you've got customers without uh, price levels, this is the price that they're going to be paying for the, the product. Uh, but you also have quantity pricing where, for example, at uh, 100 uh, uh, laptops uh, ordered, well, it's going to, the price is going to change to 100 $850 for the 100th 
uh, laptop. So that's all set here. Uh, there's nothing much more you need to know in terms of sales. So once your customer and your items are ready, you need to make sure the billing schedules are set correctly. So the billing schedule, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, is a way to invoice your sales orders in a specific manner uh, automatically. So to go to your billing schedules, first of all, you need to have permissions to do it. But if you do have the permission, you need to go to list, accounting, billing schedules. And if you click on the billing schedules, you're going to see the list of existing ones. And if you click on new, you're going to create a new one. So this one is of type standard. There are different types uh, that exist. So feel free to have a look. You know, you can have time and materials, standard or charge based. Uh, and basically, you can name your billing schedule. Uh, are you going to be invoicing an initial amount on the first invoice? Uh, maybe it could be 10% or 50%. What are the payment terms for the, the invoices that are going to be created from these billing schedules? What's the frequency of the billing schedule? Repeat every month. And what, how many recurrence should this be over? Are we uh, invoicing in arrears or in advance, so at the beginning of the month or at the end of the month? And what are the recurrence payment terms? So you have an initial payment term and a recurrence payment term. Uh, so this is set to public, meaning that anyone can use this billing schedule. So once the billing schedule is set on an item or a service, then it's defaulted on the sales order that its, uh, its item is being used. So you can have many items with different billing schedules and NetSuite will only propose to you to invoice those that are supposed to be invoiced every month. So if you have uh, two items on a sales order, one to be invoiced this month and the other maybe in three months, every quarter for example, then uh, on today's uh, day if you run the, the invoicing, it's only going to propose you the uh, item that's supposed to be invoiced for the month. Right, so we talked about the customer, we talked about the item, the billing schedule. Now let's talk about the tax code, the VAT. Uh, the VAT is usually set up at the time of implementation. So you do it by going to set up accounting and scrolling down to all the VAT. So you'd set up your taxes, your control accounts, your tax types and your tax codes. And basically, if you need any rate to be changed, you would usually ask your accounting team to do that for you. And once done, then you're good to go. So now let's do an invoice the manual way. Uh, we see here that this invoice was created from a sales order. That's because we automated the creation of that invoice uh, from a sales order. Uh, this is what an invoice looks like. You know, you've got your customer. You've got your terms, you've got the invoice date, the invoice reference number, the due date. You've got the posting period for your financials. You've got any kind of classification that you might require, departments, classes, or locations. Uh, and at the bottom, you've got your items. Uh, in terms of sales information, you're going to find your billing address here. And if the customer had sent you a purchase order reference, you'd be able to see it here too. Now, in terms of shipping, you can have a look at the, the ship date, if there was a shipping associated to this invoice and sales order. In terms of accounting, you can have a look at your estimated gross profit. This is what I was mentioning to you on the item where you see your purchase prices for the item. Then NetSuite can use that to show you your estimated gross profit per sales order, per estimate, per invoice. Now you've got your invoice. How do you create it manually from scratch? Maybe not from a sales order. You go to transaction sales and you click on create invoice and you go through the processes that I just described. Now uh, it's all nice and sweet to have an invoice, but you also need to make sure that uh, the invoice is uh, printed in the correct way or communicated to the customer in the correct way too. So if you move your mouse on the print icon here, and you click on print, it's going to print the invoice in the language that you're using on NetSuite. If you click on print in customer's locale, it's going to print it in the, the customer's preferred, uh, preferred language. So if the customer's preferred language was French, it would print the invoice with French labels. Now, uh, what does that mean? It means that if you want to um, 
to have a French equivalent, like a French translation, not just of the labels, but even of the data, like the, the name of the item and its uh, description. Uh, if you go to the item itself, the item record, and you scroll down to the system information, you will see that there's the ability to enter the sales description in French here and also the display name in French. So when you print the invoice in the customer's locale and the, his language is French, the customer will not only see the labels in French, but also the data within the invoice in French. Right. So with that said, let's go back to now the, the look of the invoice. So once you clicked on print, it's going to look something like this. And you can move the logo around, you can change the font type, you can change the font size, you can remove borders from these boxes. And the way to do this is you have to go to uh, NetSuite, you go to customization forms, and then you're going to customize your PDF forms. That's where you're going to do it. And once you've customized them, then you'll be able to see the changes. Now, if you want to add or remove things from the elements seen on the PDF, you'd have to go to the transaction form itself and look for your printed fields there. Right, so once you've done this, you're good to go. So once you've done this, you're good to go. You're ready to go to the next step now, which is how to create a sales invoice automatically based on what NetSuite thinks that is ready to be invoiced. So to do this, you have to go to transactions, billing, and process billing operations. When you do this, you will be able to uh, see all the um, you'll be able to see all the customers grouped by whatever elements you wanted to name them in. So let's say you want now to invoice in mass all the Prescott Sports customers. Uh, you don't want to invoice them all these charges, time, expenses, and items. Maybe you just want to invoice them whatever is from the contracted uh, sales order with them. And you also want to mass print all the invoices afterwards. So that's what you would do. But instead, if you want to mass email the, the invoices to the customer, you'd set the to be emailed to yes. And in that case, uh, all your customers that should be charged, that should be invoiced, will receive an email without anything in the, the, the body of the email, but with the invoice as an attachment and with a subject called your company name, colon, your invoice ref with the reference number of the invoice and then with the attached invoice in PDF. So there's another way to do this because here the thing I don't like is that you don't really see the, the invoices that are ready to be created and sent. So that might be a bit stressful for the first time you run the invoice batch. So instead of that, you could go to transactions and you could go down to customers and then go to invoice billable customers. When you click on this, it will actually send you to the page which would be similarly the one used by your billing process that we just saw that we just saw a second ago but here you'd be able to click on the invoice and verify exactly what it is that's being invoiced before uh, either printing them or sending them by email to your customers right so NetSuite also helps you with numerous uh, sales reports receivable reports uh, anything you need to be able to track all your sales activities. I think there's about 36 reports related to sales. And of course, you can customize these reports yourselves, of course, if you have the permission. But if you have difficulties, or you, maybe you, you can do that quite easily, but you just don't have the time, then just give us a call and we'll gladly do that for you. So thank you for your time and speak to you soon. Goodbye.